Welcome back to BNC Now. And joining us is the Majority Whip, the third ranking Democrat in the U.S. House of Representatives. He currently serves as the chairman of the House Select Committee on the Coronavirus Crisis. We welcome South Carolina Democrat Congressman James Clyburn. Welcome to BNC Now. Uh, thank you very much for having me. We so appreciate your time during this very busy week. I'm sure for you, this is quite an exceptional race. We know that it was really your plea to voters that really turned the corner for Joe Biden. The African-American vote in South Carolina really came out uh, to support him and really backed him and uh, brought new life to his campaign. How do you feel now uh, that we're in the final stretch of the race? Well, thank you very much for having me. You know, I have been working with Joe Biden uh, for decades. Um, I knew uh, or felt I knew uh, what kind of a candidate we needed to go into this general election. You know, I've been around this business a long time and incumbency means something. And I used to teach history. I studied it every day. And I just knew that things were so aligned politically until we needed somebody uh, to draw a contrast uh, between uh, where this current president was taking the country and where the country needed to go. And among all the people running, I thought that Joe Biden gave us that best chance. Uh, we don't know how it's going to come out, but I do feel that he is well positioned uh, to win this election and get this country back on track. He talks about this campaign being a campaign for the soul of America. I always say it a little differently. Mine is drawn upon uh, my study of history. Uh, and although I have never been able to find it, uh, it has often been said that Alexis de Tocqueville, in writing about this country, wrote that America is great because its people are good. And if the people of America ever cease to be good, America will cease to be great. I feel deep down inside that this campaign is about restoring the goodness of America in order to maintain America's greatness. That's what this campaign is about. And I think that Joe Biden uh, is the best person uh, to represent that notion. There still are those people, African-Americans, black people, people of color, who believe that the Democratic Party has taken advantage of the African-American vote, that they feel that they have not really lived up to some of the promises. What can you say to those voters about how the Democratic Party has supported uh, communities of color? I would say to them, get off of the talking points that you get from these people who don't mean you any good. There are 55 African-American members of Congress that are Democrats. There is one House member that's a Republican. There is one black senator that's Republican. 55 African-Americans. It sounds like the tokenism is on the other side. If you look at the only party that has ever produced an African-American president is the Democrats. That's not taking anybody for granted. You know, I don't know where that, I don't know where it came from. I don't know why people keep mouthing that foolishness. There's nothing that this party has ever done to take people for granted. I don't think that, uh, I didn't really get awarded the majority of her position. I ran for it. I defeated two other people in the race for it. One was an African-American guy, the other was a, a, a white woman. And the last time I ran, I was challenged by a white woman and won unanimously. Come on, nothing about that is taken in the for granted. And you just look at what's produced. You got a Republican party that's now trying to take your health care away. You got a Republican party that's put profit into student loans. We're trying to get them. Barack Obama took all of that profit out of student loans and uh, went $40 billion away from the banks and put it uh, into the HBCUs out here. And I hear all this talk about this man has done so much for HBCUs because he took the budget 
that we gave to HBCUs, I know because I developed it in the house myself, along with Bobby Scott, and then put it from one section of the budget into the other section of the budget, and then he says he'd done all this for HBCUs. The money was there all the time. It came from us. We had it in a part of the budget that you had to get renewed periodically. He put it in a part of the budget that you don't have to get, uh, we call the permanent part of the budget, and then he gets credit for all of the HBCU money. Go back and check whose name is on all the HBCUs when we restore all these buildings on colleges and universities all over this country. Yours truly name is on all that legislation. Nobody from the other side names on that legislation. So this stuff about taking people for granted, that is just a bunch of poppycock. And we ought to stop regurgitating uh, Republican uh, uh, talking points. Well, somehow, unfortunately, that message doesn't seem to be getting out there where people still do believe that President Trump is responsible for the HBCU money. Uh, but speaking of President Trump, final question. What are your thoughts on how he can take race issues in this country? There are still some African-Americans who are Republicans. There are still some believe, who believe he has done things for the black community. What do you say to those voters? I will say this simply. I'm the father of three black women. I stayed married 58 years to a black woman who passed away last year. When I see Donald Trump looking to a camera and speaking to a mic and refer to an African-American woman as a dog, I want to see the black guy who can tell me that's all right with him. That ain't all right with me. The first African-American woman to be on a major party ticket, also Asian-American, the first woman of color, he looks in the camera and referred to her as a monster. And you gonna vote for him? This man means you no good. He's trying to take your health care away, he's trying to take your education away, and he looks out over the universe of people out in, what's that, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and said, come on, uh, suburban women, show me some love. I save your communities. And when he talked about saving the communities, he said they're going to put Cory Booker in charge of your housing. What he said, I'm saving your community from black people. And then you're going to vote for him? Something's wrong with you. That's all I can say to them. <laughs> There's nothing I can do for you. I just have to pray for you. Well, we so appreciate your time and we appreciate your service to this country and the African-American community. And we appreciate your time here on BNC Representative Clyburn from South Carolina. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. For having me.